Today we're talking about one of the number one things most people blame on eBay. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about your sales more than anything else. Now, I look at a lot of stores from people that have just started off to people who have been on as long as I have quite often, fairly regularly actually these days. And one thing I have noticed, especially for those just starting off, is the biggest issues aren't eBay itself or anything eBay does, but it's more so the items that you're selling. The longer you've been on, the more you understand certain aspects, and you can instantly tell the winners, usually, if you've been on for a very long time. I'll, I'll give you an example. I looked at a store a few days ago for somebody trying to help them out, and after going over their store, their highest-priced item in their entire store was around $14, and they were including free shipping in a lot of those items as well. Now, I don't know what they're paying specifically for the items, but most of what I saw would have been long tail items or items that were in categories that may be fairly flooded to begin with, and those items may sit for a very long time. So if you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff sit for a long time, you're not going to get a lot of sales for items like that. Now, I understand everybody has to start off somewhere. We were at the bottom at one point, you know, starting off with whatever we could. But if you're selling items with an average price of around $8.70, it's just not going to be practical. You're not going to make enough money, even if you do have a bunch of sales. You really have to have a big mix in there of items that will move quick, if that's the case, or items that will sell for a lot more and still sell on a routine basis at least. Now, we work at long tail basis for pretty much everything. We put it up, we forget about it, it sells when it sells. We've got so many items up that we constantly have sales coming in, offers, offers to watchers. We do all of that sort of thing to drum up business as well. Now, if you don't have quantity, you only have a few hundred items and the average price is under nine bucks, I can't honestly expect you to have a big turnaround or make a ton of money doing that. So in those cases, when your average sale price is under $9 with free shipping, you know, you've got to weigh in your time. You've got to weigh into the item cost and such forth as well, too. You're probably not making any money or you're making below minimum wage for the time that you've invested into those things. Now, if they're quick to list, you got nothing into them and they sell routinely, that would be a difference there and it would be a good start to run that way. So what I see across the board pretty much with most stores that I look at that are having issues is that they're selling the wrong items or they're selling cheaper stuff or they're in flooded categories and they haven't investigated enough. Now, one mistake I see people make with that too is when they're looking up prices to see what stuff will sell for. They're only looking at completed listings like through Terra Peak or a standard completed listing through eBay with the last 90 days. They're not looking at what is active right now. Now, even if a hundred of something sold over, say, the last year or so, there may be 200, 300 up at any given time. So your odds may only be a 25% chance that you're going to sell those at any given time at best. So you got to look at other factors than just what something sells for. If I see something that sells for decent money, but there's a thousand of them up and only two or three sell a year, it's, it's not worth my messing with it to take the chance that I may or may not sell it because there's so much competition in those areas. So I'm always looking at aspects like that. Whenever I'm doing anything or purchase anything or listing anything or investing my time into anything like that, you've got to have a return on your investment. Upping the quality of the items is probably one of the best ways that you can improve your store, at least your sales. eBay showing your items all over the place isn't going to help anybody if no one wants to buy the items. Now, I'm no big fan of those who run eBay. The platform itself, though, is still a decent platform, even with all the changes that are constantly going on. It's still one of the best sources to make a good steady income reselling online, either way you look at it. So I'm not going to knock it in that aspect. But I don't see eBay pushing anybody down or pulling you back from being able to be seen or anything like that. eBay makes the best money when something sells. So if you don't have something that's worth looking at or worth selling because of other key factors, they're going to push something else to a customer, something they will buy. 
Now, eBay's system, I'm sure they can tell what sells routinely. They can look through the keywords. They can look at key factors of the seller to determine what's the best option. From what I've read and what I've seen eBay state, they're going to put the best possible item in front of a person that would have the highest chance on selling. Not necessarily what you pay to promote, not necessarily what you know you might think would be the right one, but what their data shows will have the best chance on selling. If you constantly show somebody stuff that they're not interested in on a site, they probably won't keep coming back. It won't be beneficial to them to constantly see items that they have no interest in or that probably wouldn't sell anyway. So it all comes down to what you have listed. Your items could be the reason you're not selling stuff to start with. Every store, as I said, I go to, I find items that just aren't worth listing or that won't sell because of many other factors or flooded categories or any of those aspects. You have to dig into the items. If you are not selling your items in your store, look them back up. Look up comps and other factors. Don't just look up comps, though. You have to look up what's up right now. Look at your competition for those same items. See where they stand. Are they priced better than you? Are their photos better than you? Are their keywords better than you? If they are, chances are you're just wasting your time unless you fix your listings to start with. So that's another issue I see. A lot of people have listed individual items that probably have not much of a chance on selling. If they listed them in group lots and things like that, you'll have a far better chance on selling them and you can get some money coming back in much quicker. Those are two key things that I see, the wrong items or not bundling items when you should. Those items can definitely sink your store as well and cause your sales to nosedive. Once the good items are gone, people will cherry pick your store the best items and the rest of the stuff will just sit there. That's why some items need to go in lots because somebody will buy the best item and you'll be stuck with the junk. Instead, you could put them in a lot. You'll get more out of that specific item because of the other items with it and somebody else will have to worry about the rest of it. Now let's just talk for just a minute here about one more issue when looking up comps. Now when you look up comps, sometimes you'll see one item that's much higher than all the other ones and people think it's an outlier. That's just one of those screwball sales. It's not a real sale or anything like that. Because all the other ones, there might be 10 or 15 other ones that have all sold in a certain range. Now that doesn't mean that very expensive one wasn't a legit sale or that that couldn't be reproduced by someone else as well. We price our stuff fairly high across the board in many different categories. If I see something selling much higher than the rest, I look into that as well. Now, one thing to think about as well is if a person only buys on the platform, they can't look at Terapeak without paying for it as a seller with the store. So without that option, they're only looking at eBay's completed listings if they want to judge what something is worth. If there are no sales in eBay's completed listings because they're only for 90 days, they won't have anything to compare it to to make the item seem much rarer than it is. It could be a rare item. That's not the point. The point is, though, that if you're looking at Terapeak and you see, let's say, 12 items, one's priced at, say, 500 the other 11 items are priced at 50 bucks. They're all solds. Again, you have to look at when those items were up. So you do have to look at when those items up to compare the pricing on those. Many people don't look at Terapeak if they're buyers on eBay. They're only looking at cop sales, completed sales through eBay, which is again, only 90 days, or they don't even do that. So if there's none others of those available in cop sales, no other ones up, there's nothing really for somebody to compare it to. So that $500 price to them may just be fine. But looking at a Terapeak result does show 12. So there's some misconceptions on what that data shows you. The 11 that sold for 50 bucks could have been sold by the same buyer all at the same time, or could have been sold within a two or three month time frame because a bunch turned up at one point. It doesn't mean that the $500 sale wasn't legit and that you can't get $500 for it. Now, one thing I do see from people researching prices also, if they only see one or two of something up and they both sold for, say, $10, they're going to put their item up in that $10 range as well because that's what they're expecting to get from it. So that's a misconception that a lot of people are going to make. So the first person who sold that item on eBay listed it, say, for that $10 and it's sold. The second person now is researching it, sees it sells for $10, puts his up for $10 to get a quick sale. Third, fourth person does the exact same thing. It's that's a pattern of what some of the prices are going to be. 
that's not always the best choice. That's why I do list many of my items higher than other people again, because I'm able to get more money for them. You've got to look at how many were up at any given time. You've got to also look up at what's up right this minute on many of the items that you're selling. If your competition is just horrendous, you may not have opportunities. You may want to wait to list something to when there's nobody else selling it. Again, you've got time into listing, photographing, and all that stuff. And you don't want to waste your time on something that may not give you a return on your investment. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. If a professional shoplifter can get an item between her legs without you seeing that item, she can steal it. This method can be used in any store to steal almost any item. Articles displayed on the counter's edge are easily stolen. An observant sales clerk would notice the clothing difference between mother and child, raincoat and sunsuit. 